you're looking at the first class of West Point cadets post 9-11. Duty first! First and Patrick Dowdell, then 19, was marching in 98 degree heat, thinking of the firefighter father he'd lost in the Twin Towers collapse. I know he's here with me in, in spirit, telling me to drive on and to keep going. And, um, you know, I know he's cheering for me. Now 38, Dowdell and his younger brother James only recovered their dad's Halligan tool from ground zero. Inscribed with Lieutenant Kevin Dowdell's initials and his company, Rescue Four, Patrick has spent weeks searching for his father's remains, which were never found. I never felt like I had more of a purpose than when I was working at Ground Zero. You know, I was alongside the guys from my father's firehouse. I remember making phone calls to the West Point admissions office while I was at Ground Zero from a rinky-dink cell phone. And by the time Patrick Dowdell finished four years at the military academy, James was graduating from the FDNY Academy, the two meeting President George W. Bush in 2006. James Dowdell now works in a rescue company like his dad did. I wear it as a badge of honor. I have a ton of great memories with my father. The pipe band was definitely uh, a thing that we all did together. They both wanted to be of service in some way. And I also think they wanted to make him proud. As a U.S. Army captain, Patrick Dowdell did a one-year tour of duty in Iraq and came home to marry his fiancee, Katie, at the West Point Chapel. Then he was deployed again. When I was in Afghanistan, I was in Farah, which is in the, uh, the southwestern part of the country. Uh, there was still a, a, a big threat of IEDs and, and attacks. I knew Patrick was not telling me everything. <laughs> and I just kept saying, your father is watching over you. At one point, Dowdell's classmate from West Point, Andrew Pedersen Keel, was fatally shot by an Afghan soldier who was supposed to be working with U.S. troops to stabilize the region. Someone you put your trust in to, to be, you know, to be partnered with to fight the insurgency and get the bad guys, and then they turn and, and shoot you in the back. Patrick was home by the time Navy SEALs killed Al-Qaeda leader Osama bin Laden at a compound in Pakistan in May 2011 which spawned spontaneous celebrations by the World Trade Center site. Pat grabbed his bagpipes, we drove into the city, and uh, we just, we turned the corner. Pat was playing, I think, God bless America on the bagpipes. James Dowdell later married his girlfriend, Chrissy, yet the family still faced another challenge. Superstorm Sandy in 2012. Roselle and Dowdell evacuated her home in Breezy Point before a massive fire swept through, traveling east to west. It was coming towards my house, and the wind changed, and it started going, I think, north. A huge blessing for sure, as the Dowdell house was spared from the flames. Another blessing came in the form of Roselle's partner, Tom O'Day, a retired firefighter who stayed behind and rescued precious family photos of Kevin Dowdell, who was his childhood friend. <coughs> Patrick and James Dowdell have now given their mom five grandchildren, and the first boy was named for his late grandfather, Kevin. The lieutenant's portrait still has a place of honor in the family foyer, a tribute to the man who inspired his sons to lives of service. We were keenly aware of the values that we grew up with, and I felt very good about the fact that, you know, at the time, my brother was protecting the city, and I felt like I was trying to protect, you know, the country. In Queens, I'm Mary Murphy.